All right. Now, as we were teaching, the whole body, he's the head of the new human race, the last Adam. He's already given us the gift of the Spirit, and all the gifts of the body are for the edification of, the love, of love, of the body of itself and love. And that, that gift is exercised by the power of the Spirit in each one of us. That's where the unity of the head comes in. He placed them in accordance with, the, with His pleasure and with His will. So, I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their thinking. So, our minds were created to be set on the Spirit of God and what the Spirit of God is doing instead of on the flesh and on self and what self is doing. There's where the unity comes in. But if you remember in, under the old covenant made with Israel, that the blessing of keeping under the old covenant of keeping the law was that they would have peace of mind. So this peace, this gospel of peace we've been talking about begins in the soul and the mind and a mind that rests in the truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. So he himself is our source of truth. And that, and as Paul says elsewhere, it says a mind set on the spirit is life, is peace. So in circumstances, I know what's happening around me, but I know Jesus is Lord. He's seated on the throne and he rules and reigns by the power. <coughs> they are darking in their understanding. And remember, this book is written to Gentiles. They were formerly Gentiles. Now have, they have come into the body of Christ where there's neither Jew nor Gentile. All are one in Christ. All have been filled with the fullness of God. All been filled with the love of God and they're operating in unity. All right, it says the Gentiles are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life that is agape life, that is zoe life, that is life lived in peace, life living in union with God. Of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, due to the hardening of their hearts. So here they've heard the gospel of this peace, this gospel of a new life in Christ, and they have rejected the gospel. Like we said, if they receive the, when they hear the gospel, they either reject it in their hearts, because they want to live their life independently of God, and you can't do that. That was part of the lie, is you shall be as God. Now, God comes in human flesh and deals with the old man who lives in sin and death, so that we can now live in a new life in Christ, which is the new man. And that new man, being in Christ, trust him as a source of truth, as a source of life, as, as the Lord of the thought life, is what's what he's saying here. Now, it says bring every thought in captive to Christ. Why? Because that's where you have your life. That's where you have your peace. That's where you have futility of thinking if you're a Gentile. Having received the mind of the Spirit, they live in the futility of the mind, never knowing what their purpose in life was. And our purpose is life that the Spirit of God in us would be producing that love that God is, that transcendent, exalted love that's a gift. Now, if it's been given to you as a gift, all you can do is receive it. But part of the gospel is I've got to die to my self-centered, self-centered life, right? Flesh-centered. And now live by the power of the Spirit. And that's a gift. That's a rest. And Hebrews chapter 3 is talking about the church. It says, as Old Testament Israel refused to enter into God's rest, God brought them out by His power, by His strength, His might, to worship Him in shadows and types in the Old Testament tabernacle, which is a type of heaven. Now it says, Jesus has come down in heaven, and He said, tear down this temple, and I will raise it up. He was talking about His physical body. Now in the teachings of Paul and others, the body of Christ is that temple. Paul says, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? The word for temple is naos, holy of holies, the dwelling place of God in the spirit. You're saying, well, I don't feel that. Well, that's got nothing to do with it. Faith is believing what God said and joining yourself to it. God gives you the faith. 
Faith isn't something I try to conjure up in my human effort. This faith is a supernatural faith that comes through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He's the author of our faith, is he not? So if he's the author of our faith, then faith begins with him and not with me. So he calls me through the gospel. He draws me to him by this transcendent love that the world can't produce. And I say, I've got to have that. That's my meaning and purpose to life. Well, rejoice. I say again, rejoice. Two of us.